What is up everybody? Today we are going to be looking at simple formula. Let's begin. Okay, so today hopefully we're going to learn what is a formula, how to solve a formula, and then how to write a formula. So let's begin by thinking about what is a formula. And I want to just show you this rectangle because this is going to be our first example of where we could use a formula. So let's imagine we were trying to measure the area of this rectangle. So we know that we would have to find the measurement of the length and the width. So for this rectangle, let's say the length is 10 centimeters and the width is five centimeters. And therefore to solve the area, I would have to times 10 times five which equals 50 centimeters squared. So what we've just created here is a numerical equation. We have numbers, we have an equal sign, we have an answer. But there's another way of solving this rectangle and one that would work solving every rectangle. Let's jump into looking at a formula. Imagine now that we replace these measurements with a variable, a letter, and we call the length A and we call the width B. And what we're trying to work out is the area, this shaded blue area. So we're going to call that C. Now, instead of being a numerical equation, we're now going to create an algebraic equation because we've now got these variables, these letters that take the place of a number. So if I wanted to write my equation now, I would write A times B equals C. And actually, there's a bit of a trick because when we're doing multiplication, we don't actually need to write the multiplication sign. We can simply write A and B. And when two terms are together like that, the A and the B, without any operation sign, we know that we have to multiply. So I can just write AB equals C. And now what we've just created here is a formula. And this formula will work with every rectangle. All we would need are the measurements of A and B to substitute into our formula. So let's have a look and see if this formula can be used for another rectangle. So now I can write down my formula. We think A B will equal C, the shaded area we'll call C. And now all I'm going to do is substitute in my numbers to get my answer. So A can be substituted with 4, so I could write 4B equals C. And then I could substitute B with 9 and end up with 4 times 9 equals C. And you can see I've had to put my multiplication sign back, otherwise I would have ended up with 49, and that could be misinterpreted and misunderstood as being just the number 49. And now I can solve my algebraic equation by doing four times nine, and four times nine is 36. So my answer would be 36 equals C, or C equals 36. So the formula A, B equals C is very useful, but very basic. But this formula will always work when finding the area of a rectangle. Okay, let's see how else formulas can be used. Let's look at this statement. The cost of food for a wedding is 300 pounds plus nine pounds per person. This rule can be written as a formula. And the formula would be C, and in this case, C will stand for cost, equals 300 plus nine times n. Let's break down our formula here and just make sure we understand every element of it. So the c at the start is the cost and the cost is equal to 300 because the 300 is a set fee, a fee for just having a wedding. And then we have to pay per person that's going to come to our wedding, which makes sense, doesn't it? If we're going to have a big wedding, we're going to have to pay more for more people that want to come. And if we have a small wedding, we're going to pay less. And the cost per person is nine pounds. So the nine is the cost per person. But then we have this times n. What do we think the times n means? That's right, the number of people that come. So n equals the amount of people. Okay, so let's try and use this formula in an example. Let's imagine I'm getting married, and let's say I'm gonna invite 40 people to my wedding. Let's find out how much this wedding is going to cost me. So I'm going to start by writing my formula, which is C equals 300 plus 9 times N. 
And now what I can do is I can start to input some data into my formula. And the data that we have is the 40. We have 40 people coming to my wedding. So I'm gonna replace the letter N with the value 40. Because remember, N stood for the amount of people that are gonna come, and we know that's now 40. So let's write my second line of my formula, which would be C equals 300 plus nine times 40. And now we need to use a little bit of our bod mass knowledge. Bod mass is a helpful reminder for what order of operations we have to do things in. And if I just write bod mass at the top here, we have brackets, order, division, multiplication, addition, and subtraction. And what we can see here is that multiplication is before addition, so I'm gonna do my multiplication first in my algebraic equation. So nine times 40 is 360. So now I can write the next line. C equals 300 plus 360. Now I'm simply left with an addition question, and I can see that C equals 660. So the cost for this wedding would be 660 pounds, based on 40 people coming. But the important thing to understand for this lesson is this formula and the fact that it would work with every amount of people that could come to my wedding. Whether I invite just one person or 40 or 5 billion, I can still use this formula to find the total cost. Now we're starting to see how useful formulas can be. Let's have a look at another one. Marie bakes cakes and sells them in bags. She uses this formula to work out how much to charge for one bag's worth of cakes. So you can see that the cost would be equal to the amount of cakes sold, which are 20 pence each, plus 15p for the bag. So we're always gonna have to pay 15p for the bag, even if we buy one cake or if we buy 20 cakes. So let's try and see if we can create a formula for that. So my formula is gonna have to start with a C equals, and then let's think back to our previous example when we had a quantity, we used the letter N. So I'm gonna do that again, almost like for number, number of cakes. So N times 20, the number of cakes times 20 pence. But then remember, we have to plus this 15 every time because we have to pay for the bag. So this is what my formula would look like. The cost is equal to the number of cakes sold at 20 pence each plus 15 pence for the bag. Let's see an example of that then. Let's imagine that I buy two cakes. So let's start by writing our formula. C equals N times 20 plus 15. And the first thing we're going to do, we're going to substitute the N for my quantity, and we've got 2. So C equals 2 times 20 plus 15. Think back to our bod mass. Remember that multiplication comes before addition, so I'm going to have to do this multiplication question. So my next line would read C equals 40 plus 15, and now I'm left with my addition, C equals 55, and 55 what? 55 pence. So if I wanted to buy two cakes, it's gonna cost me 55 pence. Let's see a different example with a higher value and see if the formula still works. Let's buy 500 cakes. A bit crazy, but let's see. Let's write my formula again. C equals number of cakes, times 20 plus 15. Now I'm gonna substitute my N for my 500. C equals 500 times 20 plus 15. Okay, good. And remember bod mass, we have to do the multiplication first, so I'll be left with C equals 500 times 20. Well, 500 times 10 would be 5,000, so 500 times 20 would be 10,000 plus 15, Left with my addition question, so it's C equals 10,015 pence. But again, the important thing to understand is that our formula here, the one that we created this time, would work with any amount of cakes bought. Okay, hopefully you've understood what a formula is, how to write one, and how to solve one. Now it's your turn. Press pause on the video, leave this screen up for a moment, and see if you can work out this question. It says, here is the rule that an electrician uses to work out how much to charge a customer. So, the cost in pounds is 25 pounds 
for every hour worked. But then he also charges a £55 just for coming to your house. So the electrician takes three hours to replace some electrical cables and some sockets. Use the rule or the formula to work out how much he's charged his customer. Press pause, good luck. Okay, hopefully you've got the right answer. Put your answer in the comment section. I'm gonna try and mark every one. Hopefully this video has been useful for you and an introduction to what a formula is, how to solve it and how to write one. If this video has been useful for you, subscribe to the channel. We're gonna be making daily videos all to do with maths. There's loads to learn, but for now, peace out.